Hello once again, it's Vice Man, Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher. This is part three of my build on the small Peterson Products drill press vise. So I'll finish it up in this chapter. And the first thing I'm going to do is to make steel jaw plates for the fixed jaw and the movable jaw, much like you see in this sample vise here. Notice that this one is thinner than this one because a V is put in there. Now I'm not going to do that. Both of mine are going to be the same and they'll simply be made out of eighth inch thick cold roll steel that I had laying around the shop and I already blued or dyed one side of it. I'm ready to start laying it out. So let's begin. Thanks for joining me again. Is everybody happy? Okay, the material is laid off here for the two jaw plates. I'll saw those off camera and of course they're slightly longer and higher than what I need because I'll trim them with the milling machine after they are fastened. Next I will locate two holes here and two here, not unlike what you see on this vise. That's how I'm locating the center. And now to counterbore for the socket head cap screw, and I do not have the right size, so I'm simply using a drill bit of the appropriate size, which is one size under one fourth. These are 632 screws and of course a 632 tap. Okay, let's see if they line up. Again, that 632, these screws will probably have to be cut off. I don't believe it. They're the right length. That's never happened before. Alright, on with the movable jaw plate. Now I put a piece of tape on the bottom just to space it up a little bit from the bottom so it doesn't bind. That might be totally senseless, but it couldn't hurt. It only took a couple seconds. So tighten that down. And believe it or not, I already tried it, but the transfer punch fits. Yep, 
and I will drill and tap those off camera. Okay, these holes are tapped. Now as I look through here, I've got two different types of set screws, notice, or socket head cap screws. The older series has a smaller Allen wrench hole. I think that's the older, so those might be real old. I don't know when they changed that over, I think in the 50s. Let's see if it fits. Now these will definitely have to be cut off. Then I'm ready for the last operation, which is milling it on three sides. So let me get that done real quickly. Okay, the fixed jaw looks good. And so does the movable jaw. Those are nice and flush. And are ready to go. I'm ready for the last operations, and it looks kind of crude at the moment, but it'll clean up and look so much better after this is all milled. And I'm going to start simply by clamping it onto the milling machine and cleaning up the top here, probably with a regular cutter and then a fly cutter, until it's cleaned up, or at least down to this level right here, which will then be about the same as this, so I'll have to take a little bit off of that probably as well, but I don't want to take off any more than necessary. Then I'll be able to put it in the vise, milling machine vise, and using a parallel set it on the portion here that's already cleaned up like that. Mill that off and flip it over and mill that off. Again trying to keep it as large as possible. Not taking any more off than necessary, but you can see on the jaws here that it's a little bit shy right there on both sides. If I had it to do over, I would enlarge this a little bit, this pattern here, maybe make it about 65% so that it would be wider. Let's go to the mill. Alright, I'm at the bridge port. Take a good look at the way I've got this clamped now. I've tightened the screw on the vise, and I'll clamp these down. It's still loose. Doesn't even matter if it's on there a little bit off of square, could matter less. So I'll tighten the two bolts and it will be held securely and accurately and I'm ready to mill and I've got that three quarter inch carbide cutter in there by Niagara that I have been favoring for this project. Okay, let's go. I hit the nut here, as if you didn't notice. Hidden down deep in the vise are some 5 8 parallels, and they will rest on this surface, not the jaws that are sticking out. Something like this. Matter of fact, exactly like that. This is for the benefit of Tommy, just in case. You know what? I've been gone for a week, so I'm trying to pick up where I left off, but I don't remember where I left off hardly. But anyway, be sure and wear your safety glasses and practice all the safety rules I preached about for over 1,000 videos. Let's get cutting.
And now to flip it over and do the other side. Well, I decided to take a finishing cut with a fly cutter. I'm not so concerned about finish as some of you people are, but let's see what that does. Okay, that cleaned up pretty nicely. Let's go over to the bench and knock off a few burrs and clean up this end and I'm just about done. I think I have to shorten that little set screw. After all the fuss I made about that dog point set screw, that one was way too long and I made my own. Now this one happened to be stainless steel so it was pretty easy to turn down. That's a 1032. Because the thing is, I wanted that set screw to be flush here, not to stick up a little bit. Anyway, it's about done and I had to make sure that I removed an equal amount off of each side so that in fact it was symmetrical and good in appearance and then the final width here which doesn't matter at all but it did end up being just a hair shy of one and a half inches so that's just fine all the burrs removed and it's looking reasonably good works fine opens and closes not a whole lot of wiggle here, but you need a little bit. i got to emphasize that. you got to have a little, or it will bind and be troublesome. And I do like the looks of those button head screws compared to those cheap plated round head stove bolts. Actually, the only place on this thing that is not machined is this part of, the, of this movable jaw, and the end right here, and then these little slopes. Now you could make one of these out of solid bar stock, inch and a half, well, yeah, inch and a half by inch and a half aluminum, or for that matter, steel. Now I know there's no dimensions given, but I'm reasonably satisfied with the finished product. And the fly cutting came out just nice. You had one little point here that maybe didn't clean up. Okay, in review, this is the original size of the Peterson Products vise. I reduced it by 60%, and these are the patterns modeled for me in CAD by Kevin from New Jersey. Thank you, Kevin. That's been a year or two ago. And then, of course, this 3D, or three-part video on actually machining this little drill press vise. Again, aluminum vise, maybe more or less worthless but kind of cute and I hope you enjoyed this video. Try one yourself out of solid aluminum or steel. There we go. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now and I'll see you next time.
Again, the pattern design by Kevin from New Jersey, and you can find it on Thingiverse. Search Peterson Products Drill Press Vice Body.